Greetings. Um, I'm at the light rail station, Columbia City, part of Seattle, and I'm heading to SeaTac, Seattle, Tacoma International Airport, flying into San Francisco for several days of work and play, and probably won't do much record shopping. We'll see, maybe at least one pit stop. Okay, so uh, let's see how this goes. Take care. San Francisco, just like I pictured it. City Hall, library. Yeah. Yeah, rain. There's the health department. Do you ever see um yes, I do. the reissue? Yeah. <laughs> no, the movie. Uh, yeah. Yes. What's with the pod, body the pod snatchers. people? Body snatchers? Yes. And uh and it takes here. Uh, and Donald Sutherland worked there. Yes. Yeah. And there's uh, a well-known fact. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm telling the vinyl community, maybe, yeah. if I include this in a little uh, San Francisco tour. Fuck these asshole drivers. Sorry. I'm just a rider. I'm a passenger. Passenger. Oh, there's the... Um, there's the ballet. The opera house. Are you videoing? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm videoing. I'm in the car with Jazz Shit Brooks. Jazz Shit. There's Thanks. the opera house. There's the Navy Symphony Center. This music, it's connected to music. Um, the green room's over there, the uh, War Memorial building, and they're digging up the streets like, just like every fucking town. Hayes Valley, we're in Hayes Valley. San Francisco. We're in San Francisco. Hey, Jazz Shit fans. It's Mazzy here with Jazz Shit Brooks. Oh, I didn't call you Jazz Shit Brooks last time, did I? I'm sorry, that sounds really bad. Brooks, <laughs> who's the jazz expert. Now, if you haven't, if this is the first time you've seen us together, search back in the playlist in the jazz section. And we did a, a, a Tone Poet Blue Note 80 uh, up in Seattle video. We did a couple of jazz videos up there, like random jazz, and, and we did a Blue Note mosaic, no, we did a mosaic box set here, here in San Francisco last time. So, so yeah, there. was that it? Is that the ones we've done? Yeah, Just we did like two? three. Yeah, I we did that two one. in Seattle, Yeah, one here. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, one was the random up in Seattle, okay. jazz stuff we were pulling, All right. and one, hey, what? Yeah. go watch them, go yeah. watch them. But we call them jazz shit, and as a recap, just because Brooks and I were college roommates in San Francisco, went to San Francisco State in communication arts, stuff that really doesn't get you a job. And um, every morning we, it'd be a race to the turntable and Brooks would usually uh, put on jazz. So I learned a lot of jazz. Then we both worked in a record store together, so I, I acquired a lot, but he's the expert on jazz. 
I know a good amount, and as yeah. I usually say, if I don't know, I fake it and I make it up. Yeah. But this, we decided to do one on mostly live jazz in San Francisco, the San Francisco Bay Area. So that would be San Francisco, the East Bay, Berkeley, Oakland, um, Monterey in the greater, it's a little farther yeah. down, the Monterey Jazz Festival. There's a few, there's yeah. a few other, so that's basically Northern it. California. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna show, Brooks is a compact disc guy, we won't hold that against him. And uh, he's gonna show some live things recorded here. And we may talk about some shows because we used to go to the Keystone Corner a lot yeah. back in the 70s and, and a few other venues. So yeah. without further ado. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, there is a long history of jazz in San Francisco and uh, Black Hawk was big in the, the 60s, maybe. It was, I'm not sure how when the Black Hawk exactly existed, but I'm thinking 50s, 60s uh, for sure. Um, small club. But they, there's a lot of recordings done there. It's on the edge of the know. Tenderloin on Hyde Street. It's torn down. It's still a yeah, parking, parking lot. lot. Yeah. It's been like that since I remember. I yeah. Mean. So um, this it's a fairly well-known Miles Davis album. It originally came out, I think, I don't know if it was a single disc or two single discs, and then it came out as a double album. And then, uh, I don't know, what, 10 years ago or something, they released this box set of everything from, I don't know, a few nights at the Black Hawk back in... 1961, April 21st, 22nd, two nights. So it's like, a, I guess there were two sets a night and they recorded both sets and both nights. Who played on this? Uh... Uh, we got Hank Mobley on sax. Uh, a lot of you know Hank Mobley from all of his Blue Note albums and Tone Poet and MMJ re-releases and all that stuff. And, and this would be, this, 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 that, this was like at least five, six years before Mobley Grape. Another San Francisco band. Um, hey, Grandma. Anyway, Witten Kelly on, on piano, um, Jimmy Cobb on drums, and uh, Paul Chambers on bass. They tore it down. Anyway, anyway it's, a good, it's a good album. It's, it's not that some people don't like it as much as Hank Mobley was a little more conservative player than Miles, and he, he wasn't actually with Miles for that long, but... Um, I don't know, I think I like it a lot. It's got a great live sound to it, and you really feel like you're sitting in the club watching this, these shows, so that's, that's one of the great things about that album. And we were a little too young to, we missed the Black Hawk. Yeah. yeah we didn't, we never went to the Black Hawk. Yeah. But we'll share a few other things. Um, so, I guess we're gonna kind of jump around Stay here. with Miles. Uh, Miles at Monterey. Uh, obviously, Miles played lots of places, and Monterey was one of them, and so this was in 1963. I can't read that. Okay, didn't, oh yeah, uh, September 63, yeah, okay. recorded Monterey Jazz Festival. Yeah, so this was, this was a, kind of a, kind of a transitional band right before the, his famous quintet with Wayne Shorter and, um, actually this is everybody from his classic group except Wayne Shorter. This was before Wayne Shorter, it was George Coleman on sax. And I happen to like that band too. Again, I think Miles didn't like him because he wasn't as adventurous as some of the others and they eventually brought in Wayne Shorter, and then the rest is history there. There's, you know, mid-60s Miles is, for many people, it's their favorite uh, era of Miles. There's the venue uh, in Monterey, the Monterey sort of fairgrounds. Same venue, you uh, rock people, pop people may know, it's the Monterey Pop Festival. They only had that, that was a one-off in 67. But the Jazz Festival has been pretty much every year, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah I believe I it's went, still there. I yeah. only went, I went twice. Uh, once was in 1978, and uh, I think I've shared that story. I was able to go in the K, uh, K Jazz booth, and they had a, like a, an upper booth above the side in, uh, the side of the stage, and they did some live interviews and some live. They, they broadcast a lot of the shows live, and uh, I got to sit next to uh, Dizzy Gillespie and took a hit of a joint from Dizzy Gillespie. So that was a cool thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my Monterey Jazz, yeah, Dizzy Gillespie, yeah. uh, brush that's with fame. That's a brush with fame. Getting stoned with the bebop uh, king. Um, but it's a cool venue, it still goes on. Um, yeah, every year. Yeah. I've um, never been there, I don't know why, I just, you know, I haven't been Jimmy there. Lyons, Jimmy Lyons was the uh, producer who yeah. started for years on that, so. I'm not sure who runs it now. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I guess as long as we're, well, we're on Miles, I guess we'll show this, this Miles, this is part of a, 
a series that Columbia's been putting out over the last, I don't know, five or ten years, bootleg series, which, you know, depends on your definition of bootleg, but anyway, there are albums that were never released during his lifetime and have been sitting in the vaults and, uh, you know, maybe it's because the quality is slightly less, so I don't, in a lot of these you don't notice it. Anyway, there's various different versions that, are, that have come out, and this particular one is Miles at the Fillmore, and it's got shows from both Fillmore East and Fillmore West during the, in the early 70s. So it's, you know, it's electric miles and there's great stuff on here. For you guys uh, uh, who are not into jazz, maybe, you would probably, you're probably not watching this if you're not into jazz. <laughs> maybe, but maybe, maybe you're trying to be educated a little differently. But um, it, it's, it's sort of the equivalent series that Sony puts out of the Bob the Dylan, Dylan stuff, uh, the yeah. Dylan, uh, archive and the, the, fish, the official bootleg series. People like yeah. to see posters and shit on these videos, so. What is that? I don't know if I ever even opened that thing up. Okay. All right. Wow. Damn, I think we should, I think we should just like stick it. Oh, Look, yeah. You got any gum or any uh, scotch oh. tape? We'll stick it up. No. Bro. <laughs> There you go. Anyway, yeah. Miles. Miles. Miles at the Fillmore. Fillmore's. Now, the only time I ever saw Miles Davis was in the Bay Area. It was at Frost Amphitheater, which is um, on the uh, Stanford University campus. And he played one song for about an hour, maybe a little under an hour. That's kind of what one, he did. One long piece. And he opened up for the, um, oh, sorry, for the new, ra new Riders of the Purple Sage. So it was outdoor, like a Saturday <laughs> event. Miles Davis opening up for the new writers of the Purple Sage. And wasn't it like 100 degrees or something? Didn't you? Or no. Was that a different show? Uh, that's when I saw else. the band at the oh, same okay. venue. All right, uh, the band, Robbie Robertson, Levon Helm, etc. Okay. Rick Danko, you know, the usual, the band. And uh, it was so hot. It was like 100 degrees and outdoors and you're under, not undercover. Not a huge place. It was perfect size. Hmm. And the back around where everyone was sitting on the grass or on the area, the band arrived in a giant red fire truck with the siren going and squirting the hose over the audience you know cooling us off but wow. that's nothing to do with yeah. jazz no it has nothing to do with jazz um so i guess we can here let's look at we, we were talking about monterey um we in the previous uh, version of this we did mosaic boxes so we're, anyway they basically don't have anything to do with san francisco except for this one uh, Charles Mingus Jazz Workshops and uh, a couple of the discs in this were recorded in Monterey and um, it's a it's a particular period of time for um, him 64 through 65 when Mingus was with this particular group and they were trying to form a new sound and uh, anyway so Mosaic got all these tapes you know some lost tapes I guess and various recordings that, uh, a new sound. Did, yeah. Uh, there's Mon like there's Monterey. Monterey. That's like Monterey. Monterey. Yeah. There's a great book um, I've showed before. Uh, Jim Marshall, the photographer Jim Marshall, oh, yeah. has a great jazz book. You should have that book. I should. Because it's a Monterey. I know. It's jazz. <laughs> I have I a jazz should. shit book. He doesn't have. Yeah. Monterey jazz shit. Well, I, I don't have any more room on my shelf. <laughs> there's always for, room. For, there's for always room. Photo books. books. They're already there's are, always room. They're already on the floor. Yeah. Uh, Monterey. Yeah. God. Charles Mingus. So, so many great things that. What did I see? I'm trying to think of what I saw in Monterey, too. Huh. That, that, Besides, um, were you there all weekend? I was there like two days. Mm -hmm. There was What's that guy, that white sax player or horn player, Scott something? He, he was a young guy then, he had a little mustache. This is in the 70s. Scott, anyway, I forget I his know, name. You guys know out there, somebody out yeah. there knows <laughs> Scott. Scott. Oh, uh, Tom Scott? No, 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 no. I didn't think so. Not, I mean, he's more... Yeah, I mean, right, yeah. You know, good musician, but that's not... Right. You know, a real jazz... Yeah, sure, yeah. real skinny guy wore a tie. Like he, he was dressing in the 70s like Bill Evans dressed in the oh, 50s. Huh. Kind of that kind of yeah. hair back... Um, well, okay, know. we don't know. Yeah. Anyway, Mingus in San Francisco. Yeah. Now, Mingus... Um, any other... I never saw Mingus. I never did either. I was I'm bummed about that. But, yeah. Uh, I almost... A friend of mine who was also into jazz, and we were roommates, we, we almost went to see him at the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco, which probably, I guess that would have been in the 70s. And he was already not well at that point, and, but I don't know, so the middle of the week, and we thought, eh, I'm tired, we've been working, we'll, we'll go see him next time. And then there, there wasn't a next time, so unfortunately. So <laughs> that, was, that was the only real, not opportunity to see him, but the only time 
what I was really into. It. Tragic. Yeah, right. So Tragic. Here, so. We're actually right now uh, sitting in um, his place in Hayes Valley, neighborhood of San Francisco. I can see City Hall out the window to the right. And we're literally next door or across the alley from SF Jazz, which oh, is the right. big jazz venue now in San Francisco. Just yeah. tell them like a minute about what this yeah. is about. SF Jazz. Well, SF Jazz um, started, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago or something um, by this guy, Randall Klein. And uh, for many years, he put on this jazz festival, but uh, they didn't have a home. So they would, you know, rent out different venues around the city and have a jazz festival every year. And then <clears throat> finally, several years ago, they got an idea and figured out a way to finance building their own building. And so they did, and it's like, like Mazzy said, it's right next door. Um, and How, how's the theater? It's a, there's there's two. They do lots of stuff there. It's not. It's actually not even just performances. They have like school classes for high school kids, and you can take classes there and recording and stuff. But it's you know known as much as anything for for jazz shows. And there's a, basically all year there's stuff going on. They have different seasons, but. You know, there's basically music there all year round, and there's two venues in there. There's an auditorium that holds, I can't remember now, I'm thinking 1,500 or something. Uh, it's not a, not a big venue, but it's, it's very cool. It's got steep seating. There's a little sort of balcony area around where you can even get seats, you know, fairly inexpensively. And uh, it's got great sound, and it's, it's a really ni nice venue. And then they have a very small room that's right on the street, and it's uh, half of it's in glass, so you can look out on the street and everyone can look in, and it holds 100 people. And I've seen some great shows in there. They've, they've booked some people that are like, really good, and you get, you know, can't get much better than a, a venue that holds 100 people, so uh, okay. that's, that's the other one. So, so jazz um, in the city. So as long as we're talking about them, we might as well talk about the Jazz Collective, which is they also sponsor um, a group called the SF Jazz Collective, and every year they, they, have, they have their own kind of season. Now, we're, it's a collective of different jazz musicians that have been, I guess, contracted or sponsored to be in the group. And they get together and they rehearse, and it's always a theme. Usually, uh, a jazz artist. The one he's showing now is, is was Miles Davis, and they'll re they'll do their own arrangements of that artist's tunes, and also they'll they're commissioned to write their own piece, sort of based on the sound of whoever that artist is. So they put out albums every year. Do you go to all these shows or no? I've Are they been shows? to a lot of them. I haven't been to all of them, but. Um, and so, um, yeah, so then they perform it and they record it and then they put albums out every year. They're usually two or three discs and... Um, What's that noise? Motorcycles. <laughs> it's a Saturday morning motorcycle ride that comes through here. I really? I just, yeah. I, Get your motor yeah, running. I, I think they're probably just going to go the across highway. the bridge or something. Yeah, I know. Um, so, uh, I have a, a half dozen of their albums. There's probably twice as many altogether. Um, are the same musicians on everything? No, that's the thing. It started, I mean, Bobby Hutcherson was the original version of it. Um, uh, and they, they rotate musicians, but usually only like one musician at a time every year, maybe. There's no schedule, but so the addition of SF Jazz Collective now, there are no original members left. The last, actually, original members left, I think, last year. There were, there were two guys that were either in the original one or maybe a second from then, but uh, now it's changed quite a bit. There you go. And then the most recent uh, one they did, I just saw them uh, like a month or so ago. The theme was uh, 1969, Miles Davis and Sly and the Family Stone. So it was featuring In a Silent Way and Sly and the Family Stone Stand, which other than the year, I, I'm not really sure why they picked those two because those two albums are like completely yeah. different. So they actually didn't play very much of Silent Way, and they did a lot of slide. And they actually did a, they were more rock than I've ever heard them. They now have a guitar player, and they had a singer who, um, I don't know if he's gonna be permanent or just for this season because of the slide thing. It was, it was a pretty wild show, I was very surprised.
or maybe since we're we're, we're going yeah, yeah, we'll around, around the Bay Area, but that's like yeah, shows. Yeah, fine. You would yeah. never just go to one show in one club, and we're going back down to Monterey just oh, Monterey. to yeah. show these. So yeah, there was a series that came out on Columbia what, uh, 10 years ago, maybe, or something, of Monterey stuff that I, I guess hadn't been released before. I, I'm not sure. 64, Thelonious Monk. Yeah, so there's a Thelonious Monk one from that series. There's a Louis Armstrong one. We already showed you. The, to Baden, the, the, we already showed you the Miles one from there, didn't we? That's, that's yes. over there, yeah. And there was there was a bunch of others. I only have three. But, um, and once again, that's Monterey Jazz Festival and three of the albums that came out. So where oh, are we now? Keystone. Oh well, we can get it at Keystone Corner now. Um, one of the probably the most legendary jazz clubs in San Francisco. Or at least on a par with the Blackhawk, which is legendary as well. And a lot of albums have been recorded at Keystone Corner. Unfortunately, I don't have many of them on CD. I've either got them on al album in a box. A or, lot in the 70s, uh, right? Yeah, 70s or, yeah, probably We were 70s, at that perfect yeah. age because we went. Yeah, we both lot, went yeah. to a lot of shows to Keystone. Yeah. It was on Green Street. No, Vallejo. Near, oh, I'm sorry. Val yeah, Vallejo. Vallejo near Street, near, across the alley from the police station. Yeah. <laughs> in North Beach near Columbus um, and up, down. In fact, I'm gonna insert in a little bit something. Uh, I think right now, we'll be right back after this break and you're gonna see Grant and Green. Oh. Wow, wasn't that interesting? Yeah, wild, that's crazy, huh? Anyway, down the hill from Grant Green, um, a block over across Columbus, yeah. was the Keystone Corner, Todd Barkin's Keystone Corner. A uh, tiny club. Yeah, very small, but man, boy, we saw, everybody, all the greats, particularly in the 70s and early 80s were, I'm trying you to know, think Dexter of, Gordon and I saw Dexter, Bill Evans. And, Bill, I saw Bill Evans yeah, there. The Ross on Roland Kerr. I didn't Tony see Williams Ross. And I saw Elvin Tony Jones and Miles Davis played there. Art Blakey I saw. I saw um, uh, uh, McCoy Art, Tyner. Art Blakey played there a lot. I saw him a yeah, times. I saw McCoy, McCoy Tyner, Tyner there. there. Well, I everybody. saw uh, Bobby Hutcherson Bobby there. Hutcherson. I saw Joe Henderson there. All the H's. Yeah, right. Uh, Hart? No, I didn't see Hart there. Billy Hart? No, Hart. Oh, uh, Hart the Barracuda. Band. Oh, yeah. No, they didn't play I'm there. sure Billy Hart played there, though. Drummer. The great drummer. I heard the baseball player, no? No. Is it, oh, that's... Uh, that's uh, oh, Jim Ray Jim Hart. Ray Hart yeah. from the San Francisco Giants yeah, in the, the 60s. 60s. <laughs> Whoa, all right. Hey, we're dating ourselves, because we have no one um, else to date. So, Keystone Corner. Anyway, they, there's a book. Someone wrote a book about Keystone Corner a while back and uh, published it. So it's interesting. If you have any interest in reading about Keystone Corner, you can find this book. There's a lot of pictures and... I haven't read the whole thing, but it sounds like actually the management of it was pretty chaotic. He, he, Todd Barkin, who's the who was the uh, the guy who ran it, just I don't think he was even looking to start a club. It just sort of happened. I think he bought the space from the guys who started the Keystone, the rock clubs. Because there were uh, three um, Keystone clubs in the Bay Area. There was well different versions of it. There was yeah, Keystone right. Berkeley. Right. There was the so Stone. Which I think it was a Keystone. They had to change the name. I don't remember yeah. all the details. The one on Broadway. There's Stone on Broadway, yeah. and there was one in Palo Alto. San yeah. The Keystone Palo Alto, the Stone Palo Alto, that so, had more yeah. rock and roll shows. Yeah, those were all basically rock venues. But I guess they owned this one too. Maybe this was even their first one or something. But they needed to get out or wanted to or whatever. Um, but we went a lot. And, yeah, and yeah, they're like, like ticket for four dollars, five dollars. Yeah, so you could buy a Keystone card for like oh, I don't know, fifteen dollars or something like, and then we need, then we're glad you get tickets for five dollars. Or it was something crazy, you know. Definitely not a money maker, but uh, jazz artists got treated like shit yeah, in I'm terms sure of payment. Of it, yeah. um, but I probably went to I don't know thirty shows there, maybe Could more, be, yeah. maybe more. Surprised, yeah. we, we went to some together, not a lot, you know. And there was like some local bands, Mel well. Martin and Listen, right? A few times, yeah. Yeah, and then trying to get <laughs> get paid. Oh, the one non-jazz show I saw there was uh, Captain Beefheart. He really? played at Keystone Corner. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that was that was yeah. yeah. Well, now okay. Now what let's there's pictures. In let's there from talk there. about yeah. here. Yeah, I don't know. Well, let's talk about other venues too. Yeah. I mean, in San Francisco. Obviously, uh, the main jazz place in the 70s, at least. Okay, Black Walk was oh, before our time. Oh, this, because this is there. Okay, Keystone? Yeah, Keystone. Oh, oh this is an important one. Yeah. Um, Bill Evans, who you, anybody who knows jazz knows Bill Evans, uh, piano, obviously piano player, and played with Miles on the 
only the one time on the famous Kind of Blue album, but, you know, anybody who's ever heard jazz probably has Kind of Blue, and anyway, he's instrumental in that, and his yeah, basically last, wrote it. and he was not well for the last few years, he had drug problems and so forth, and his health went downhill, and he played, uh, I think it was two weeks at the Keystone Corner in 19... What is that? 1980. 1980. And as it turned out, those were his last shows. He died within, I think, a week or so of the last show. And this particular box that we're showing here, there were two boxes that came out, I think, of all the shows, I believe. And this, I think, is the, the second box which has all, would be all of his last performances ever, ever. It's ever. called The Last Waltz. Yeah, it's called The Last Waltz. The other one's called Consecration. I yeah, I saw him here in the 70s, oh, but yeah. also, oh, okay. but also there was a, okay, a, there was a guy, I can't remember his name, I should have researched this, but um, he owned a beach house down in, um, Oh, Pete Douglas. Pete Douglas, there yeah. we go. See, we, he knows the shit yeah. I don't know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I know the shit he doesn't yeah, right. know, <laughs> and I know more shit of some shit, and he <laughs> knows more shit of other shit. And so it works, so That's jazz shit, works. Yeah, shit, jazz shit works together. Yeah, right, Pete right. Douglas, I yeah. said I was going to say his name. Pete, That's all right. No. That's what it was called. Pete Douglas had a beach house, or he still has it. I mean, he's yeah, dead, yeah. I think, but but still going. It's I still going. Been there in years. The Bach, the beat Bach, Bach dancing, dancing dynamite society, yeah. something like that. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And it's on the way. It's about thirty to forty minutes south of San Francisco, just before Half Moon Bay in Montera, California, on the beach side. And the beach side it's there, right down the, the coast. Yeah, basically. yeah, it's just back a little bit, yeah. but. Um, uh, there's actually a walkway in front right. just behind it. Goes, yeah, there's a little street in front of it. Anyway. And it has a big open windows and a deck, and you can look on the beach. And that area of the beach is not like Southern California. It's foggy, cool all the time. But I don't know exactly how it started, but he was a jazz fan. He would open his uh, living room, and it was like kind of a big living room, but not huge, with a couple of balconies, like a staircase, and people would stand around. And usually, he would have shows there on Sundays. Sundays yeah, I think it's still that way of artists that were playing the Keystone and jazz oh, clubs right. the night true. before or the weekend. So if someone played the Keystone on Friday or Saturday, Sunday afternoon they'd go down and do an afternoon gig. Um, and I think it was free, but you could put money in donation. You didn't have to get yeah. a ticket. You'd just show up. Yeah. You'd go in the refrigerator, grab a beer or something. <laughs> Seriously, it was yeah. just like hanging out. Actually, that room, though, I think it was like built at more of a venue. I remember maybe that was later on. but it was They a, extended it a little bit Yeah, out. it was like a, I'm still talking small, but it was a room, there's a little balcony kind of thing. Right, um, and I saw Bill here. Evans there at oh, one yeah. of those shows. Oh, like, wow. that so been good. It's probably like, not even 50 people. Yeah, no, I bet there was. Really? What I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, maybe a couple it was like Playboy before. After Dark yeah. TV show, Everyone, you know, everyone's like... Yeah, Being but I mean, cool they put the folding beach. chairs out, and, and there was this balcony. Thing. Little piano, I remember, by the window, off, you know. It, it really cool spot. Yeah. I, I probably went there seven, eight times, or less than ten, I don't know. Anyway. Else, you know. If anybody's watching this in the Bay Area, you can look it up. They're still, like I said, they're still doing it. There's Bach, a show Bach Dynamite at, Society. Yeah, Bach, Bach Dancing and Dynamite Society. There you go. See, he knows it. But then, okay, so we had Monterey uh, Jazz Festival every year. We have Keystone Corn to Black Hawk. The yeah. Jazz Workshop was before our time yeah, as well. I think, I'm, not, I'm thinking that was on North Broadway, Beach? but I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm really not sure. Actually. There was a lot of these yeah. kind of clubs around the North Beach, Broadway, the Matador. Uh, then we don't have records here, but... Basin Street West. I Basin Street West. Street West. A lot of things was. like Cal Jader. Yeah. And right. um, what's the other guys that were on San Francisco? The Vince Guaraldi. Vince Guaraldi. You know, uh, we don't have any Vince Guaraldi here, but he played a lot. Uh, it was based on him in San Francisco. Um, who did uh, Hard Work? Oh, yeah. Joe Handy? John Handy. John Handy? Sorry. Yeah, right. John Handy. He had a little more funky in the 70s, but he right. was he played a lot around here. Right. Ali right. Akbar Khan, that's a little different thing. Yeah. But the kind of the yeah. Indian fusion I mean, with jazz yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a big venue, yeah. it's the Masonic Auditorium, uh, obviously the Fillmore, where... Um, yeah, uh, they would mix stuff up a lot and get a rock band and a jazz band or something. Yeah, I like saw that. Stan yeah. Kenton. I think it was Stan Kenton. said open for the Who's. Not Stan Kenton. Um, uh, what's the other one? Oh, Woody Herman. Woody Herman. Right. right Woody right, Herman right, Big right. Band, 1969, May, opening up for the Who performing Tommy at the Fillmore West. <laughs> that was my uh, first show at the Fillmore West. Tommy and <laughs> and Big Band. And Woody Herman. Woody Herman. <laughs> Man, I thought yeah. I was going to see Woody Allen and yeah, Woody well. Herman, <laughs> Herman showed up. Um, so, you know, there. Uh, uh, see what other I mean what other venues? Uh, well, we, we got we got Yoshi's. Oh. And we're not getting to that. Or Do you have a Yoshi's? Else. Well, there's this. Yeah, yeah. Yoshi's in the East Bay. Um, 
they've uh, yeah they, they used to be in a very small venue and then I don't know 20 or 30 years ago they built out a space in a in another space but and anyway, they were they were a jazz, a, club a jazz club and a yeah. sushi restaurant yeah and it still is and yeah. it still is they're still going they've really cut back on the jazz in the last several years I mean, you know I guess maybe Economics. not as much of a money maker or something like that but uh, it's still going they did open up a venue in San Francisco briefly maybe 10 years ago and it did a lot of issues with that didn't work out unfortunately it was a political nightmare yeah and the space was weird it was kind yeah. of cold i didn't really cold, like going there deco it was like out of its time yeah yeah something it, just that's a jazz but and then jazz succeeded. yeah some jazz came along right around that time too and probably when that happened knocked just them down didn't work anyway this i don't this is actually the only actually i have another album recorded at yoshi's too now they think about it um Anyway, actually, I actually saw this show. It was Kenny Burrell's 75th birthday at Yoshi's, and I went and saw that, and they recorded this album there. And uh, he had all these guests. Uh, you know, there's like, um, oh, that organ player, the, the large, the, who's on here? Not, um, who played with uh, Jerry Garcia. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Uh, Not Merle Saunders, no. Sorry. Well, anyway, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Can find it quicker. That uh, doesn't matter. Anyway, it was a, it was a really good show. He had lots of guests who came out. John Handy might have been there as well. I don't I don't remember now. Hard was, work. Um, but Yoshi's still it's a great club. It, it's a really nice bed. Good size. Great sound. Um, good sushi. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that's. Uh, was there one on, on also a club on Bush at some point way way back? A little tiny hole in the wall. A jazz place? Yeah, I think it's again before our time. Oh, or no, oh no, the North, we talked about the North Beach clubs a little bit, other things, Broadway clubs. Um, oh, I, uh, I mean, there are large venues, like on UC Berkeley, there's Zellerbach Hall. Right, right. And I mentioned that before. I saw Keith Jarrett there. I saw Miles Davis there, actually, okay. in the early 80s. They have a lot of jazz. Coming back, yeah. Yeah, they like still Cal do Performances, it, yeah. which is uh, UC Berkeley. and. And um, I saw, but Keith Jarrett, when he was doing his solo, it was like several years after Colin Concerts came out on ECM, which is the, I think the biggest selling solo piano album ever. And I saw him and that's when he would be a little snooty against rock and rollers and he Probably would be moaning and, uh, when he's playing his piano. I've said that on other videos, so old news, but, he, but great, great shows. I don't think I saw any jazz at Winterland, right? Um, I don't think I did. No, um, I mean, nobody, I mean, open up. That might have been a little after he was doing those types of shows. Yeah, he mixed up, he'd like mixed up just rock and roll and some soul and, and funk stuff then, but not really any jazzy yeah, uh, I don't, things. No. Nothing I remember, I mean, doesn't mean they weren't, but... Anyway... Savoy Tivoli, there's no jazz, no more rock and I roll. I remember, yeah, no. that was... A North Beach, Upper Grant. Um, Columbus, no, 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 no. Tower Records. <laughs> um, it, for jazz venues, I think. We're probably missing something obvious. And yes, something someone's going to write something yeah, obvious. Right. And, but what and, about... And Berkeley, anything on the peninsula. Well, here's a, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's actually a really good album recorded in Berkeley, a club that I don't think I've ever seen anybody, uh, any other albums recorded there, and I don't really know anything about it. But this album was recorded there. And, it's, and if you're looking for a West Montgomery album, this is probably the best one. Uh, he's really strong on this. And Johnny Griffin, who happened to be playing, I think, in, over here in the city at the time, uh, came over and sat in with him, who's a sax, tenor sax player. And the two of them just work really well together. So, uh, yeah. That's, Produced that's by Orrin Keep News, 1962. Yeah. Wow. Winton Kelly, Paul Chambers, and Jimmy Cobb is the rhythm section, which was Miles's rhythm section on the Blackhawk. I never saw him. He, album. Didn't he die in 67? Who? Uh, Oh, Wes Montgomery? Yeah. Oh, no. He he died or, relatively yeah. young, yeah, maybe yeah. in the early seventies. Never I'm saw. Not, it. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm trying to think about guitar players maybe I saw 60s. live. I don't remember seeing any guitar players. Jazz guitar. At um, Keystone Corner. I just I don't know just timing. I never saw Kenny Burrell. Did you? Oh, you just saw this. that one. Right, right. I might have seen him before, but I, the no one I remember right off. You know, um, I never saw Grant Green. Well, no. he died. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Pretty young too. Yeah. I didn't see him. Yeah, uh, Jim Marshall uh, took that cover I showed earlier, the Grant Green cover on North Beach. So actually, there's a uh, club right there, a, a kind of a, not really a, a club, bar. but a bar it's that has sometimes live music, bluesy, whatever, rock, yeah. blues stuff. And there's another one, uh, the Saloon. I mean, that's not jazz, but it's a great club. 
a great kind of bluesy rock club mm -hmm. on the a bar. Been there you need forever. to go been forever. You need to go there on the like the weekends in the afternoon and get drink at the saloon on the Upper Green. Air. Yeah, it's a funky place. They had yeah. a thing there with uh, uh, the guy played there from Country Joe and the Fish. The, oh, um, really, Barry Melton? Barry Melton oh. played there. Oh. Yeah, so they did some stuff there, you know. But anyway, what's great about growing up in the Bay Area, I mean, I born here, grew up here. He came from Santa Barbara, and uh, we met college time, worked in record stores. It was a perfect, it was the yeah, 70s, into the 80s even, perfect time. Then we both started going, Brooks was, we were each other's buddies to go to punk clubs, Mubuhe Gardens, the Deaf Club. That was the time. So, you know, Brooks is probably one of my only friends that turned me on to different kinds of stuff, and it was to this day, is open to experimental, out there shit. And if we don't like it, we don't get pissed off about it, we, right? We just kind of... Oh yeah, right, you just go, and if it sucks, you can either leave, or you, yeah. don't worry about it, you know. Noisy whatever. stuff, he goes to, talk, now we're, let's, we're gonna end here in a minute, but talk about, he used to go to South by Southwest every year with a couple of his buddies, and it was getting too crowded, and, yeah, and talk about crazy. that into the other concert. Yeah, um, actually I was gonna mention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, Take South it, Brooks. Southwest, 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 you know, and rock people, I'm sure, know about it. As a festival, that's been going on like 25. Yeah, Austin, Texas. Uh, started off as like a conference, I guess, for indie labels and, you know, music conference. So industry people would go and they'd have showcases and stuff. And anyway, that kept growing and growing. And I guess they let in, finally started letting in people that weren't in the industry. And uh, some friends of mine that had been going, started going, I guess, in the early 2000s. Um, I'm not sure how they got started going down there, but they told me about it and then talked me into going in like 2008. And uh, it was great. Even, even then, it was already getting big, but uh, it was still doable. And venues all over town, nothing, no big venues. They're all small. They're bars, cafes, backyards, parking lots, uh, anywhere you can set up a stage and, and play music. So it was... A lot of fun, and the, I we did I did that for like ten years, and it, it just got out of hand. It, and it's just huge. It's spread out too far around the city, and hard to get around. And so success kills yeah, South by Southwest. Yeah, yeah, basically. It's still great, but yeah, yeah not yeah. for me. So we started looking for somewhere else, and we came up. We found this uh, festival called the Big Ears Festival in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is now our favorite festival. And this will be our third year, and we go in March again, and it's. It's hard to describe the kind of music because it's it's very diverse. It covers all genres of sort of rock, jazz, classical, performance art, and it's it's really some of the most important people doing that sort of different kind of music. Name some of the artists kind of, you've seen there. Uh, well, you've gone twice now. Uh, I've been twice. Um, artists I've seen there. I mean, I've seen everything from. I'm going to name some names, but you may not have heard of them if you're not really into stuff. Although, I did see Carla Blay there. She's fairly well known, been around many, many years, done lots of lots of different things. There was an ECM 50th anniversary festival that was sort of uh, embedded into uh, Big Ears this th this year in March. And so they had some ECM artists. We saw Ralph Towner. Um, seen like wild stuff like Diamanda Gallus. It was like this I really sort of... Uh, oh, we, we forgot the yeah. Kabuki. Uh, oh, the Kabuki had some stuff. Did she play there? But I, I, I think I saw her at She's the like, Kabuki. I was surprised she was Not a lot of going. jazz there, but it, I saw yeah. Laurie Anderson there too. Oh, Didn't okay. Laurie Anderson? No. Yeah, I might have seen her there. I, at, I know I saw her once or twice. No? no, not at Big Ears. Oh, okay. Um, Patty Smith is going to be at Big Ears this coming year. I don't know. It's... Uh, Hard for me to like. Would they have someone like movie. like Sonic Youth, Kim Gordon too, or they do out it's there? It's possible. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's people do. Actually, John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin's doing something there this coming year with somebody else, and I'm sure it's going to be something totally out there. For, and even if not out there, just an interesting. It's not going to be a rock and roll show, in other words. Uh, but they do have some rock things. Wasn't there some piano some player you went to? I'm trying to think. Wasn't there a piano? I'm think, I can't. Remember. I mean, I don't know. There's people like Craig Tabor and I've done some really interesting stuff and. Uh, Evan Parker, who's you know known in a lot of circles as a sax player, sort of out there stuff. And uh, uh, let's see, um, I don't know the bad. Was it the bad plus? We saw that. No, not the bad plus. It was. Don't know. Oh, oh, Medeski, Martin, and Wood. We saw them there. Was that this year or last year? You know, they're they're a good amount of people know them. I actually found their show boring, kind of. It was 
kind of the same sort of jammy. Did they do Sweet Judy Blue Eyes? Uh, no. Um, oh. <laughs> but it was just kind of kind of endless, jam endless jamming that kind of didn't go anywhere. And anyway, whatever. They're very popular though. So what about Chicago? Uh, Chicago wasn't there. Art Ensemble? Oh, right. Yeah, they had an anniversary. There was like a... I don't mean Chicago Transit Authority. Well, I don't know. Art Does Ensemble anybody Chicago, really know what right time there. it is? I guess it was part of the, uh, maybe associated with the ECM Festival this year. It was a, Art Ensemble? It was Art Ensemble Chicago, kind of a tribute in the fact that there's only two guys alive still from that group. And they, they were both there, Roscoe Mitchell and Don Moyer. But then they had this expanded ensemble. It must have been 15 or 20 people on stage. And... Uh, that was a really good show. That was so the, kind really of like nice the Art show. Ensemble of Chicago Orchestra. Yeah, you could say that. Almost. Orchestra. Yeah, yeah. I like saying orchestra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see Sun Ra? That New Orleans show. I, oh. I saw Sun Ra. I never saw Sun Ra. I went to the New Orleans Jazz Fest like twice in the late 80s. I was living so in New York at the time when it was kind of it was easy to get there. Some friends of mine went. And um, one friend of mine, and the, that festival goes on over two weekends, like at the end of, April and the beginning of May and so it's weekends but there is stuff that goes on during the week and I guess we were there and my friend knew that Sun Ra was doing this special show at a schoolyard out in the suburbs of New Orleans so we we drove out there and uh, it was literally the playground and they were set up and there was a bunch of people there and there's actually a YouTube video of that particular show wow. um, you can look it up it's like 88 or 89 or something so you can find it, it was, pretty cool yeah I know yeah I, I keep looking for myself to see if I'm in there and it, the camera doesn't quite pan over to where we were it was probably just some guy with a handheld you know, eight millimeter movie camera or something. It's probably an iPhone negative seven. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? No. So, uh, um, that's Jazz Shit Brooks and yeah, right. Mazzy. That's not what we're really called, but you, you get the idea. <laughs> look at our other previous jazz things. You got to sneak back, look in the playlist of jazz. But this, we, we're trying to think of a topic, something thematic mm -hmm. to do. Because uh, we did, you've seen all the other ones, but San Francisco. Yeah, I mean right, that's yeah, our home. Yeah, that's yeah, his that's home still. Yeah. I come back here a lot. Yeah. It's been a fun week uh, during the holidays, having lunches and cocktails, and um, no music, and only one little record store thing that um, is snuck in here somewhere up on in North Beach. But um, thanks for watching, and thanks for all the the jazz knowledge. It, we might have forgotten some yeah, clubs, yeah, yeah. some venues, yeah. so write them in there. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's the whole college, university thing. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. You know, I mean, San Francisco State didn't really have a lot of good shows. I can't think of anything. They had the, really the Theater of the Arts, and they had yeah. that stupid student union with no place. Oh, that to... one that they built, that, yeah. that weird cement. Yeah. Thing. I guess it's um, still there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, anyway. Yeah. So, thanks, Final Community and uh, others for watching, and... Uh, Mazzy loves you. We'll see you next time. Okay, we forgot a couple. Uh, the Pablo Festivals, where? At the Masonic Auditorium. Okay, they had Pablo, Pablo Records, which was a, was a George Ween, was that? Black no, and White Covers? Uh, or Grands, George. George it's Grant, Norman Grands. Norman Grands was Pablo, Norman, right? she's And it was Norman. named after Pablo Picasso because that was his favorite artist or something. But anyway, there were a whole bunch of jazz albums, mostly in the 70s. Uh, that was at the Masonic Auditorium on Nob Hill, also on Nob Hill, the Venetian Room. Venetian Room and the Fairmont, Fairmont Hotel. We both saw independently, yeah. I don't think the same show, no, uh, no. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Da, ha, ha, the moon, by the loop, boop, I think it was Tony Bennett who played up there. I think all sorts of people. I saw Tony Bennett there. Yeah. I saw... I um, else who played there. Um, it was particularly active in the 70s, yeah. I think, with like lots of wild Oh, Circle stuff. Star Theater down the peninsula. I saw Frank Sinatra. At one point he had a jazzy kind of thing. <laughs> I saw Merle Haggard there too, and Willie Nelson. That's not. I never went jazz. to the Circle Star Theater. Oh, it was my, like a circle in the round life. type of thing. Yeah. Um, they got into country things in the seventies. A lot of people from Bakersfield would come up and go to see oh, shows, Modesto right. and stuff. So, anyway, this is just an insertion somewhere. I don't know where we're going to put this. <laughs> Revolver. I'm going to say revolver. Record. Pick a record. Mark? Montrose. By Ronnie Montrose. Ronnie Montrose? Uh, Malibu Ken.
McCartney bound on the run. Jimi Hendrix, Band of Gypsies. We're celebrating some uh, two of our friends that we lost this year. We're in San Francisco, North Beach, Original Joe's.